All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. So we are assembling today to have some final words before the prelims examination. Now, at this point, what I would say is we have a couple of challenges. We have to draw some new normals for ourselves. We have to make the most of these last days that we have for the prelims examination. These last days, remember that some of us, in fact, all of us, may have had this feeling that we have wasted some of the time. All right. The first thing is, you know, some of the concerns, some of the maze that you said is, sir, I have wasted a lot of time. I just want to say at this stage is <laughs> that <coughs> whatever time we may have wasted, whatever things we may have missed out, that is no longer relevant. What is relevant today is that the time that is given to us between now and between June 5th. So it simply means that the time that is left for us has doubled its value. Time today for you is more precious than it has ever been. Remember that in competitive examinations, the time immediately before the exam is always more valuable. Some of you have said that, sir, what should be our strategy in these last days, I just want to say something that, you know, with respect to strategy, what should be our strategy for the last days? The truth is, this is the point where you need no mentor, you need no strategy. All you have to do is wake up in the morning, solve a few questions, Study current, get tired, take a small nap. Study static, get tired, solve questions. Eat, sleep, repeat. This is all. As long, I repeat, as long as you are studying, as long as you are able to study, and at this is the point, I have never asked you to study more than 8 hours a day, but this is the point where we need to study at least 10 and 12 or more hours. This should be the setting. This is the point where this, I, I think that this is the time where you must sit for 12 hour more hours out of which effective study time should be anything more than eight hours, more than effective, more than eight hours. Any effective studies more than eight hours is brilliant according to me at this stage. All right. So this is something that is extremely crucial right now at this stage. Uh, <clears throat> Yes. <clears throat> so any strategy that you are following right now is the right strategy. I'm not going to give you a strategy per se. As long as you're studying, this is the time where you must sit for at least 11, 12 hours to test. If you are not having a back ache, I repeat, if you are not having a back ache and B, if you are not developing temporary myopia, you are not doing the job right. All right, this is the time where you have to sit as long as you can so that you're to the point where you can no longer sit. To the point where you can no longer sit because your back hurts, that is the point you have to study. And you have to study as long till your eyes hurt. Not by looking at some screen, but by looking at your books, your notes, your previous papers that you have solved. This is the time where a lot of us develop temporary myopia, short-sightedness because we have been studying for long hours. This is something that should happen and it, don't worry, it will take care of itself. Once the prelims is over, that temporary myopia will also go away. I promise you this. Okay, so the strategy right now is to sit as many hours as you can and simplify your schedule. What I say is simplify your schedule right now. Make it simple. Make it very simple. I'll tell you how typically students simplify their schedule. Simplify your schedule, not too many activities in a day. You wake up at x a.m. Let us assume you are waking up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. 
whatever is the time after waking up before your mind gets distracted by something make sure that before that distraction happens before that friendly neighbor comes before those negative ideas come before our baggage comes and hits us in the head before all the past comes to haunt us some of us at least before a lot of baggage comes before this by the time you are waking up spend at least 30 to 40 minutes the first hours solving questions solving mcqs i repeat you must be right now what i call you must be right now in a problem solving mode you should be in a problem solving mode you should be solving questions so much so that questions from the basic topics questions from the basic topics questions from the static parts they must start feeling familiar to you new questions if any they should be coming from maybe current or maybe some aberrant questions but from the static part you should see that these questions are you have seen them somewhere so after waking up please do not waste any time the first thing that you could do is solve mcqs and i ask you not to solve too many mcqs i say you can solve minimum 20 25 questions and maximum 50 questions in fact i would say that do not solve questions for more than an hour or so some of you some of you who have the habit of early celebration that i have studied one hour i have solved questions and the my test has been good and now you are in celebratory mode which means going out and having tea with friends sugary tea with friends to increase your happiness levels hai na if you are in that condition it is better to solve 25 30 40 questions at max so that you are not tired or you are not drained out all right remember we don't have to become tired solving questions some students conventionally the mistake that they make is every day they are solving full length papers and they are not studying all right <clears throat> so whatever papers test papers you have you solve them 30 40 minutes after waking up and after that this time give it to your static part of the syllabus static part of the syllabus there are five pillars we used to say four pillars but you could broadly assume there are five pillars in the static part polity history geography geography and environment we can say and the last is science and tech science and tech is also a pillar as far as prelims is concerned given the increased weightage of the subject in the syllabus <coughs> all right given the increased weightage of the subject in the syllabus all right <laughs> then <coughs> so i was trying to adjust my screen so that i can read your comments i can read your questions please post your questions here i already have a set of questions that you have sent me via mails all right so once you are tired after studying for x hours you are tired it's a fairly good idea if you can do two things when tired either take a 20 minute power nap please take power naps throughout the day if needed you are not doing a 10 to 5 job you are doing a mental work you are going to put in mental effort if you were to put in physical work also you would need rest we are going to it is expected that you are going to put the highest intensity of mental effort that you have ever put in your life at this point all right in the coming days you will put your mental effort and not just any mental effort but the highest intensity mental effort has to be put which means you will be mentally tired it's all right if you take a 20 minute power nap or you could again solve 20 questions followed by a power nap now some of you will say ki sir i am tired and i can't solve any questions remember in the exam you will anyway be fatigued and you have to develop the ability to solve questions where your mind is tired you are not going to go very fresh i mean at least half the students half of you will go very fresh they have cleared the exam probably before you had a good night sleep and then you're going you are very fresh though that is a very big plus all right <coughs> so you you may already be tired you may already be you know a little fatigued so you have to develop how you are going to fight this examination when you are even not at your best energy levels you are with suboptimal energy levels and then 
despite the suboptimal energy levels, you have to clear this exam. So after doing a study, you're tired, you take a nap, or you solve questions and take a nap, after which you do current affairs. Followed by again some tired, which means take a nap or end of day. This is how your typical day should look like. <coughs> That's for one. Simplify. And what do you do after all this thing? Eat, sleep, repeat. Nothing else is needed. Eat, sleep, if possible, exercise. If you can, that's wonderful. Eat, sleep, exercise, repeat. It has to be simple. Nothing great in life is achieved without making it simple. It has to be simple. Waking up, solving questions, start, starting, studying current, getting tired, taking a nap, studying, uh, start, uh, studying static part of the syllabus. First, revising, revising, and revising. <coughs> Second, again tired, take a nap, study current affairs, tired. You know. Now, another thing that I want to also tell you here is the most important part, which you must do if you want to clear the exam, is what I say is daily. internet time. See, we all are going to have a daily internet time anyway. We are going to spend some hours studying on the internet. <coughs> you know? So, those of you who are in SFG, I will try to bring some points here. Rishab, okay. so I'll put, this is a time that we are daily allocating to the internet. Please develop this habit, especially that every day you will be, you know, when you study something, you will make a list. You will make a list. You will make a list of uh, what I'd say, pro usually proper nouns or keywords. Which sort of proper nouns or keywords that are not in standard books? But asked, I repeat, not in standard books, but they are asked where? They are asked in test papers. All right, make a list of proper nouns, make a list of names. You come across a term called IUCN, make a list of it. You come across a term called Great Indian Bustard. You make a list of it, make a note of it. You come across the term like 5G, you make a note of it. What do you do with this list? You every day you spend at least, you know, what I would say is, as of now, I can say that at least 90 minutes, up to 40 minutes, so definitely, and up to 90 minutes, and no more than this on the internet. Between 40 to 90 minutes, please spend reading about these keywords from Wikipedia. All right, whatever you have read, why I'm saying this, you say, sir, I already have my notes. Should I not revise my notes? You must revise your notes. That's always all right. But look, what is going to happen is that when we have read something and when a question comes, we are going to again get be doubtful about it. He, did I, do I remember this correctly or not? That's a big problem. You know, do I remember this <coughs> correctly or not? That is going to be a challenge. So, you need what you, what, this is something that is extremely important as a mentor, I can tell you that sometimes I see some brilliantly, you know, brilliant rank holders and they come and they ask, sir, what should I do to improve my rank? They probably know it. They just want to hear the same things from my mouth. Why? What is the reason? They need what is called reinforcement. They need reinforcement, so do you. So if you are forgetting certain facts about the great Indian bustard, and it is dimly lit in your mind, when you go through Wikipedia's first paragraph, it will have A, all the details you need to know, and B, the most updated details you need to know. The most recent things that have happened with respect to the great Indian bustard. So you will come to know that great Indian bustard is threatened, it's, uh, you know, is facing habitat loss, you will come to know that this Great Indian Bustard habitat loss is being caused because uh, it is treated as a game across the border, across the run of Kutch. In Pakistan also we have Great Indian Bustard. So there it is treated as a game, which means shooting is allowed. Therefore, it is losing its population. Habitat loss is happening and its young ones are threatened by stray dogs, very commonsensical things. 
यंग पॉपुलेशन इज थ्रेटेड बाई स्ट्रे डॉग्स दिस विल क्वेश्चन विल कम इन द प्रम्स एंड यू विल थिंक सर ऐसे कैसे स्ट्रे डॉग्स कैन बी ए प्रॉब्लम बट इट विल दोस्ट थिंग्स यू विल फाइंड इट विल फेस प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज इट देर आर इलेक्ट्रिक लाइन्स बिकॉज ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी प्रोजेक्ट्स देयर सोलर पावर प्लांट्स एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी प्रोजेक्ट्स आर देयर इन राजस्थान देयर फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक लाइन्स आर देयर एंड दे लैक फ्रंटल विजन दे कॉन्ट सी स्ट्रेट दे हैव आईज ऑन द साइड जस्ट लाइक मोस्ट बर्ड्स so therefore they lack frontal vision therefore they go and hit the wires and the size of the bird is very big all right so the case co- the case has gone to supreme court also you will come to know these things and these will be something that will be written from a very simple perspective acha very simple perspective and then so you already know something about the great indian bustard and then this extra data is coming in your mind your idea about it will be rock solid and you will not fall into doubt when the question when you see it in the question every day i say that please make a list of terms list of terms and please give it a daily internet time you anyway are going to so how do you read you read these keywords from the wikipedia you read these keywords from you can, let's say you could search the hindu or you could search even forum is you search you will get the latest article that is mentioning that keyword All right. Let's say there is 5G. The question is on 5G. Now, some of you may think that why do we have 5G? So there will be certain details. <laughs> so you will see, sir, 4G. For example, 4G is something that is good enough to watch this video. In fact, some of you would be watching. Yes, some of you will be watching this video on 4G networks. Why do we need 5G? So you will immediately come to know that the latency is much less in 5G. Somewhere it will be mentioned. on the wikipedia website that latency is much less and thirdly what is important is that while 4g is about connecting our laptops and mobile phones to the network 5g will help us collect a further billion devices including the fan the ac the air conditioner the washing machine everything can be controlled from 5g so therefore when these number of devices will be added to the internet call making it the internet of things we will need 5g and 4g is not suitable so now this is something that you will develop this understanding when you read an article on 5g but if you are focusing you know on only doing this thing from a certain mind frame ki mujhe itna pata hai aur iske beyond i'm not looking i'm sorry to say but commission wants curious people the commission wants curious people while 70 80 90% percent of it will be fed in your solutions by the coachings but that extra 10% to 15% that effort is needed from your side please make sure that you know 40 to 90 minutes is you are giving on the internet studying you know making a list and studying you should be very clear the common words that you see every time in the questions and you are scared of it theek okay? hai no need to be see i'll tell you i, I think i've said this before and i'll tell you something again see there are two things in life one is you know that you will always be you you may always feel uh, afraid there are two you know there are two kinds of what what is called fears people have one is that they live in fear there are two kinds of life you know there's certain aspect of one is living in fear of something and the other is living in want of something that you want x y z things you want x y z things and living in fear of something i can tell you that in life you will always be this cannot be changed you will always want something that you cannot have you will always want something that you cannot have always therefore what is in our hands is this one do not live in fear of anything if you are afraid of a topic study it if you are afraid of a test paper kill it if you are afraid of revising put that extra hour and do it if you can do if you should do then you must do it i repeat if you are afraid of something do it first you know it is is something that we do it all the time psychologically psychologically you are doing it i see some people if you go to marriages or if you go to some relatives places and they have offered you like five things some some people do eat the karela first and you ask them why do you eat the karela first he says because this is going to test bitter let me finish it off otherwise i'll always be in the fear that i have to eat karela at the end and it will spoil my taste no need of living in that fear what you are afraid of kill it 
Don't live in fear. You will live in want. Even if you become IS rank one, you will live in certain wants. There will be some things that you can never have. All right. Nextly, I want to tell some of you, those who are losing, you know, losing their minds, they want to give up. <sighs> Please understand these last 20, 25 days that we have with us. They are going to be scary. Not even my selected students who are appearing for the interview, they are chilling out saying that, sir, we have appeared for the interview and we have cleared three prelims. They are also scared. There are students who have never cleared the prelims or it is their first attempt, they are also scared. It is not that no one is afraid of the exam. But the point is, this is the time. This is there is, it's perfectly normal. It is, please understand that it's normal to be a little afraid. I would be worried of, about you if you are not a little afraid. For that matter, there are 25 days to the examination. I am telling you, I am a little afraid. I am telling you, I am a little afraid for some of my students whom I've seen grow through the years, whom I've seen study slog, and I'm afraid. The point is, please draw a new normal for yourself. Normalize few things, that this is a part of the journey. This is part of the experience. We cannot fight it. We can devote our energies in fighting these fears. Or, and in fact, when people clear on this same podium where I'm sitting, I wish I could show you around in this same podium on the same screen. This year we had a community meet. All right, and wonderful people whom I was, there was, uh, you know, students secured rank 5, rank 9, rank 11, 13, 15, all those rank holders came here. And I want to tell you that some of these people cleared the exam not despite their fear. They were very afraid. Some of these people cleared the exam not despite their fear, but because of their fear. I have taken some mocks. I was busy this year taking some mocks. All right, around 600, 700 students uh, apply for mock interviews with forum. We are able to cater to around 300 plus every year. We try to. That, that's the, with the capacity that we have. We can't take more than that. So around 300 students will be taking their mocks, out of which 200 would be internal. That is, they have studied with us. And 100 students would be, who have been referred by a friend, that you go and take a mock at forum. I can tell you. Every seventh or tenth candidate, by all means, I ask them, what's your problem? And they say just one line, that, sir, I have to do very well in the personality test. And when I ask them, why do you need to do so well in the personality test? They say, sir, my mains has not been good. And I said, you've cleared the mains. Why do you think your mains was not good? They have said, sir, I was so afraid of the prelims that I overstudied, and I did not do anything for the mains. But I studied very hard for the prelims, and somehow I cleared the exam, and I wrote the mains. I was not expecting to clear, but I cleared the mains also. I am telling you that two-thirds of these people, and in fact more, the ones who are afraid, the ones who are jittery, the ones who are trembling, worried about their results, they will somehow get into the list with a good rank, and they'll always send a message like, sir, Selection, okay, I don't know how. In this same classroom, I remember sitting in one of the front benches was a student. So when he got a 27th rank, his first message was, Sir, hello, sir, 27th rank in civils, pata nahi kaise. All right, he went and joined Indian Foreign Service later. All right, <coughs> so make sure that it is perfectly all right to be a little afraid. It is perfectly all right to have some butterflies in the belly. You are not going to conquer your fear. You are going to clear this exam despite being afraid all throughout. In fact, I'm often worried when I see somebody too confident. We have interviews right now, and I see the ones who will make it to the top of the interview will be the ones who will be a little afraid, not the ones who have been reckless. All right, little bit fear, normalize things. This is a part of the experience. You will recall. You are going to recall. <coughs> yes, Tarun, I am Neon. Thank you for 
Um, okay, so you also got the spelling wrong. <laughs> Wonderful. Knee vein. Yes. Um, <coughs> so here, make sure that you will clear despite your imperfections, despite your imperfection, despite your poor score in uh, simulators, despite your poor score in SFG. Sometimes I see the students who clear the final exam and they very proudly say, I never got under 100 or 200 rank in SFG. I was always in reserve list. Still, I have gotten a rank. I want to often tell them that the secret why you clear the exam by being a part of SFG is not because you get a top rank at SFG. That's only half the thing. You clear the exam because you have been studying. So those of you who have been part of SFG and RLG, one thing that definitely I want to say to you is, Bacha, that this year, you know, out of 10 candidates that I have been able to take interviews with, I saw that at least three to four were there for SFG itself. So they were writing their first mains. I can tell you that if you have studied even 70% of SFG, if you have been able to do well, you'll be clearing this exam with good colors, with flying colors. Even if you don't clear with flying colors, you'll be able to cross the, not with a great margin, you'll be able to cross the boundary. But the condition is at least 70% of the program you should have done with honesty and studies as well as you can. All right? So this is with respect to fear. Another thing that I want to say is, if you are living in North India, you will be sleepy. Sleep is another problem. The point is that all of us before the exam will feel sleepy. You know, we'll be feeling sleepy. There is a word for it. Feel soporific. I remember it 10 years ago, 10, 10, 10 15, 15 years ago, I remember this word was from soporific, feeling sleepy all throughout the day. This, how do you deal with it? To be very honest, if you feel sleepy, take a power nap. Power nap. If you feel sleepy, please sleep for 20 minutes. Sleep for 20 minutes. Take a nap. Listen to your body. That's perfectly all right. Nobody in the history of civil services examination has come and told me that, sir, I could not clear prelims because I was very sleepy. That has not happened with your seniors. That has not happened with you. And that will not happen with the future generation. All right. If you feel sleepy, what should you do? You should sleep. Lesson number one. Lesson number two, sleep no more than 20 minutes. You, the guy watches half the video and says that Ayusar said that you must sleep. And I wasted one and a half hours, you know, one, an hour listening and I therefore I slept. Some students will come back to me and say that, sir, you asked to sleep. So every day after my heavy breakfast at 10 o'clock, I used to sleep till 5.30 or 6 o'clock. That's not what I say. Lesson number one is, when you feel sleepy, you sleep. Lesson number two is, sleep no more than 20 minutes. I had a student, Rahul, and he made it with a very good rank. He made it with a very good rank. When he got through, he once called me and he says, Ki, sir, I've been getting, I have, I have gotten Assam cadre. Well, I said, oh, that's bad. Agar IPS, so, so I said, I, he got IAS Assam cadre. So I said, oh, that's a little difficult. Most people want to stay in their home state and, uh, you know, maybe they wanted north or south, but it's, you've gotten a distance place. Then I said, do you wish that you had gotten IPS so that you could write the exam again? He said, no, sir, I am from Assam. He said, no, sir, I am from Assam, so it's my home state and my first preference. But jokes apart, the point is, that student in particular, I remember, he was writing SFGs in this classroom that I'm tra trying to record this lecture from. We have a bit of a COVID situation at Forum. Some of the faculty have been infected and therefore we are trying to take some precautions. We are trying to use different classrooms so that infection does not spread to other members. All right, and therefore <coughs> we did not, we planned this session in the offline mode, but we have tried to avoid it, all right? So, <laughs> I still remember when the, I used to meet him, he said, sir, I feel very sleepy after, C after writing the SFGs. I used to come here at 7 o'clock. I was sleep deprived. I used to write till 8. And I used to attend sessions, classes till 9.30. And when I reached home, I used to sleep. 
I said, that's wonderful. What did you do after waking up? And he shared the secret why he became an IAS. He said, sir, after waking up, I would study for at least eight hours with just one break in between for food. All right? So sleeping is not your problem. Some of you have mailed saying that, sir, we are having sleep as a problem. I can't keep my eyes open. When you are sleepy, you sleep. It does not matter if you have been sleeping. What matters is what you did after you woke up. I repeat, it does not matter what you did when you slept. What will matter is what you did after waking up. That's the crux. That is where the answer lies. You know, if an Abhishek comes and says, Sir, I slept through the time. Nobody sleeps through the time. Secondly, those of you who have, you either take coffee or tea, all right, or you don't take it at all. Some of you, if you feel that beverages such as coffee or tea is not helping you break your sleep problems, it is likely that you have some sort of intolerance from milk or sugar, and that is making you further sleepy. I am saying this with the experience of at least a few dozen students whom I asked that how did they fight sleep before the prelims? Because most students, we are Delhi based. So most of the students in Delhi, Delhi it's, it's actually a little, you know, uh, <coughs> it's actually a little uh, soporific, a little uh, sweaty, and it's, it's, it's hot and humid at this point. So if you want to have coffee and tea, if it helps you, you take it. But if it is not helping you, it is likely that you have some sort of milk intolerance. And at least a few dozen students in the past seven or eight years is somebody I've met who has said that, sir, because of that milk, I realized that I was feeling further sleepy. After a cup of tea, I was more sleepy than before. Please identify these bottlenecks and solve this at this stage. All right, identify these bottlenecks and solve it at this stage. You should not be sleeping because you have tea and coffee. All right, so sleep, sleep no more than 20 minutes. That's all. Then some students have also asked this question is, yes, another thing that I would want to say here is, to some of you is, that no wasting time in decision making. Please reduce. See, no wasting time in decision making. Every day after waking up, you should not be concerned what should I be doing, doing during the day. That cannot happen. You have to know beforehand, before you wake up, you have to have your clear-cut plans as to what you are going to study. Don't get into false binaries. What is a false binary? I call this a binary. Binary means two. One of the two. So some of you have mailed me asking that, sir, what can I do because I have limited time, shall I? Solve test papers or shall I revise basic books? Basic books or CA? Shall I revise study material or shall I, shall I solve test papers? These are false binaries. This is not an either or question. I repeat, it is not an either or question that to solve papers on one hand excludes or precludes revising the study material at hand. Don't create such false binaries, Ki, sir, I can only do one of them. Try doing, when you wake up, solve test papers. When you are tired, you study. Study the material, whatever notes, whatever books you have. When you are tired, again solve test papers. I want to tell you at this point here, one thing clearly, do not confuse. Do not confuse between two concepts. One is tiredness. And the other is boredom. De learn to differentiate at as early as possible in your preparation journey. Learn to differentiate between boredom and tiredness. You are bored. Are you sleeping because you are bored or are you sleeping because if you are tired? If you are tired, by all means, you must sleep. If you are tired, by all means, you must take rest. If you are bored, 
Not such a good suggestion. If you are bored, change what you are doing. Change what you are doing. If you are bored studying the book, if you are bored reading modern history, study current affairs. If you are bored reading current affairs, solve test papers. All right? But boredom should not culminate into having a tea break or... And more on this, on boredom, I do want to tell you that the secret to success or the ladder to success has steps of boredom on it. You become successful in any walk of life by doing the same repetitive boring thing again and again. I repeat, your ability to work through your boredom, your, your life is not going to be any exciting right now in the next 25 days. My life is not, I'm associated with students and my life, nothing exciting is going to happen in the next 25 days. It's the same schedule that you will have to go through every single day. Nothing exciting will happen. You're, the only excitement you will have is when you'll get a very good score in a test or a very low score. That's the highest and lowest points of your life as of now for the next 20, 25 days. But nothing more than that, nothing more colorful or spicy is going to happen unless you are into Bollywood and follow Bollywood, you know, or Hollywood and you follow some masala gossip for which technically you should not have the time for. All right, but nothing more exciting than this will happen. If this happens, this itself is quite good. So boredom, please remember that you clear the exam because you are able to work through boredom, learn to work through boredom. You know, I had one student, the first video on YouTube, you must see it. So he secured rank 34, the first attempt, as far as I can remember, or 43, the first attempt. His video would be the first one on YouTube. Poor sound quality, I guess, that should be the case. So I happened to call him. So his friends told me that he's very powerful IAS officer now. And he was powerful. He helped me out with certain something. I had some work and within six to seven minutes, he helped me resolve it. I remember... I asked him, how did you clear this exam in the first attempt? That was seven, eight years back. All right, that was not now, that would be like 14, 2014, 15, as far as I can remember. How did you clear the exam in the first attempt? He said, okay, sir, I had a chair with a plank, like we have in the coaching where you sit and you put the plank and we write. So I used to sit in that chair and I used to make sure that I sit a, in that chair continuously for five hours, putting a pillow, sometimes under my seat, sometimes around my back. I said, didn't you get bored? He said, sir, that is the trick. I was making sure that others were, so he was from a college called NSIT. All right, I think the name has changed, Netaji Subhash Institute of Technology, Delhi, Delhi University. I think the name has changed right now. So he was from there and he said, sir, I sat until I was bored, I used to make sure that if I'm sitting and others are also studying from the college, final year, I used to be the last man sitting. So you have to learn, get accustomed to bored. Nothing exciting will happen. Your phone, those are distractions. Get away from them. Focus on the essentials. Focus on the essentials. All right. <coughs> Then at this stage, also avoid any such thoughts. You know, remember this. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. We suffer more in imagination. Imagining things than in reality. All right. All of us, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Don't worry about imaginary things that will probably not happen. Don't worry about imaginary problems that you will face. One such imaginary problem is, right now is, you know, which some people will be saying is, even if you clear prelims, And I'll leave this empty, dot, 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 dot. You can fill it up with whatever you like. This is a common syndrome. Even if you clear prelims, 
even if you clear prelims x y z means you will not get through optional you will not go through you are not smart enough to be a, a good interview candidate you have you know x problem y problem that's forget everything this even if is important this is important and primarily what is really important is at this stage think nothing but of the prelims don't stay away from people who tell you that even if you clear prelims if you are <coughs> yes simran singh so i'm confused all this time because i i'm going to forget all my theories we all will have such fears don't imagine things if you have studied it fine enough in reality you will not forget everything that will not happen you will have the fear you will think and even before the exam everything will be jumbled in the mind you will not remember what is the difference between montague chelsom reformed and you know <laughs> minto morley reforms which one was earlier which one was later what were who hai na so those problems will happen but in the end when the paper comes in front of you you will be able to solve it if you have studied well all right remember labor never goes in vain mehnat kiya hai you will get the output all right so please if you are having any friends who are telling even if you clear prelims no just focus on clearing prelims just focus on clearing prelims and that is itself is hard work i am telling you and i'm guaranteeing you that the hours that you are going to put in this last 20 25 days will transform you it will make you something that is capable of clearing the mains this year as as most years there are so many students and they say sir i don't want to go for the interview which is the last stage of the examination i said why so sir i don't think i'll be able to give a good interview and i'll be rejected i'll not be able to clear it in the final list the truth is i tell them i often tell them very loudly write it down in your notebooks often copy me kehta hu take out your copy and write it down if you are good enough to clear the mains you are good enough to clear the interview with good rank so i also want to tell you those of you who are totally worried about clearing prelims and thinking that even if i clear prelims mains i am nowhere i am telling you if you are good enough to clear the prelims you are good enough to clear the mains if you have gone through the labor intensive task of preparing for the prelims and slogging days and nights that precedes 3 weeks before the prelims exam you will become what is needed for me to train you and prepare you for the mains and you will clear it with flying colors you will master it you will master it with a great rank even this year you will see that so many students we are at least 30 students will be there in top 50 60 ranks from forum we have seen them all throughout the year all right this is the confidence that i have because these students have slogged they have not been in their comfort zone sitting in their air conditioned rooms they have taken pains they have come here they have sat they have sat they have struggled they had their share of struggles theek okay? hai so any focus on the battle at hand you will win the war focus on the battle at hand focus on the battle at hand <coughs> and you will win the war if you try to focus on the war instead you will lose the battle i repeat by corollary hai na maths mein padha hai na by corollary theek hai by implication please understand if you focus too much on the war you will lose the battle if you focus on the battle at hand chances are you will win the war all right i think that is please focus and make sure that your every day is productive make sure that your every day is productive all right lastly few things again what i want to also say is that this is the point where you may be going a little insane some of you by studying so much trust me that kind of studies does take a toll on us i want to tell you here that a little bit of madness and insanity is needed to achieve anything worthwhile i repeat a little bit of madness and insanity is needed to achieve anything worthwhile some of the students who clear the exam are the ones who have gone you know who have been studying like madmen like insane people you know just studying continuously slogging out continuously so much so i remember so many students who have, whom i am seeing like fifth or sixth time i am fed up of meeting them sometimes and yet they have stood their ground 
and then they have come out with a wonderful rank under 30. So remember, a little bit of madness is needed to clear this exam. If you feel your you you feel your mind is full of you know some certain mad ideas and uh, you are uh, <coughs> you are going insane with the kind of load that you have, it's normal, and that is probably needed to clear this exam. I also want to tell you that miracles happen. I don't know how. But in this classroom itself, I have addre addressed at least 70, 80 students who have been in the list before they were in the list. So miracles happen. I don't know how it works, but if you keep studying, somehow you make it. If you keep studying, I don't know how this law works, but on this planet, on this Mother Earth, if you keep studying, if you keep the distraction out, and if you keep working, you will get what you want. Obviously, most of the times when people get what they want, they don't, they don't any longer they evaluate. That's a different question. All right. So this is all that I wanted to say. If you have any questions, I will be taking them up. Uh, one of the questions that is there for especially SFG students, SFG students, is it is extremely important for you is that you every morning, every morning you begin the day with problem solving. Solve questions. Please do not avoid this. You have, you must do it. You have achieved a certain level of proficiency. You have developed certain good habits. All right. <coughs> you have developed certain good habits. Sustain them. Okay. You must every morning. Second is, we don't want you to have withdrawal symptoms. That right. after SFG is done you are not having productivity. This should not be the case. You should not collapse like a <clears throat> pack of cards. Those of you, you are a night person. Yes, this is also the time. Those of you who are night people, make sure <clears throat> that at least those of you who are night people, you study, but make sure, night people, you study all night, but that is, all, that is fine. But you make sure that you start practicing writing tests between 9 to 12. 9 a.m., you should get, make sure that your mind is used to alertness, to being alert. So you may study till 4 a.m. at the night, sleep. But then at 9 a.m., please be awake and study during 9 to 12. Make sure that you do that. Otherwise, at late times, it will be a problem that, sir, my mind was not used to study at uh, in the daytime and I had to, the exam was in the day. All right? <coughs> Santosh, uh, all right. You end up, so Divya, you end up being sleepy during daytime and studying more at nights. Study more at night. My only requirement is 9 to 12, stay awake. 9 to 12, slowly you shift your cycle and stay awake. All right. <laughs> Lastly, very simple things that I, in the end, what I would want to say is, please make sure that whatever you read, yes, is with respect to subjects. Planning subject wise revision. Isme, there are two, three things, and the last thing that I want to say here is, Bacha, is <coughs> that first is that give each subject around three days, two to three days. 
you study each static subject two to three days. Don't make a five-day plan. No five-day plan. Because if you make a five-day plan, first two days you won't study. So if you're going to study polity, don't study five subjects in a day. You study one static subject in a day, you give it three days, and after third day you change the subject. That is very important in the last stage. So you will be able to go through, if you have 20 days, you'll be able to go through six subjects. All right, you'll be able to go through six subjects if you have 20 days. You give each subject two to three days. When you are tired, you switch to current affairs or you study any other subject. When you are tired or when you are bored. But don't give yourself five days to study polity. The time is not there. All right, again, when you give yourself five days, this is your day one, this is your day two, this is day four. One, two, three, four, five. What will happen is your productivity will be like this. It is better to give yourself three days only. One, two, and three, your productivity will be like this. So you, this time will not be wasted. The first three days you are not studying. So make sure you do that. Second thing here is, with respect to planning the subjects, is please study logical, not so memory-based. which are logical subjects, they are not based on memory. A lot of it is not based on memory. You study it earlier. And for the last, you keep it for memory-based subjects. For example, subjects that are logical, not based on memory, something like economy. All right, it is the least memory-based subject. It is the most logical paper. So even if you read right now, and you don't get the time to revise in the end, you will do very well. I repeat, if economy you read right now, or you don't get time to revise, you will still do very well. Okay, then the next subject that comes is polity. No matter what you feel, polity is again one subject which is a little logical, and if you do not get the time to revise, you will still be able to do decently well. All right, you will still be able to do decently well if you don't revise it in the last moment. What is a completely memory-based paper? Modern history. If you don't study it three days within the prelims, I repeat, three days within the prelims, if you do not study it, three days within the prelims, if you do not study modern history, if you do not study art and culture, if you do not study geography, environment, factual stuff, you will not be able to recall. All right, so make sure that you study polity economy right now, earlier, and be very clear that you will not get a time to revise. And memory-based subjects should be done at least three days within the prelims. Okay. Second is that I told you about the internet time. Also, when you begin your day, you begin with problem solving, then you study your static, then take a break or a nap, do your current. At the end of the day, you do some internet studies. And please, every day, again, at least 40 minutes to 90 minutes, you do random revision, what I call random revision, which means that an unrelated subject you stand, take the book, and walk around in your room, revising everything. You start studying and you start reading it. You do random revision. What is the random? You are studying polity, for example. You are studying polity, you are tired, you do some of current affairs, and by night, you are tired. 40 minutes, even, up, even 30 minutes, I would say 30 minutes, minimum 30 minutes, and up to 90 minutes. What will you pick up? You will pick up your modern history, and you will start reading what are the you know, major legislations that were brought by the British. I say unrelated random revision. Please, by doing these, you know, by doing these random revisions, when the dots connect, you will be able to finish the whole syllabus. All right. So next day, let us say you are studying modern history or you are studying geography. You take up suddenly, you start at the end of the day when you're tired, when, when, it, when it's a geography day, you are tired, you take up polity, which you've already finished before. And between 30 minutes to 90 minutes, depending on your energy levels and the time, you revise all the tables of Lakshmikanth. That is also wonderful. You revise the tables of Lakshmikanth. 
all right <coughs> and at this point what i would say is stop solving mocks about I mean, you know in the exam mode see if you are solving the mock papers and if it is giving you confidence you go ahead and solve the mock papers if it is not giving you confidence you just solve the papers don't count your marks let it go Three weeks, if the mock paper solving is not giving you confidence, you simply solve them not in the exam mode. No need of doing total of, you know, in 100 questions, how, how much am I scoring? That is not needed. You would probably go ahead and only solve 25, 30 questions. Solve it in a problem solving mode. Solve it in practice mode. No need to solve questions in exam mode right now if it is not helping your confidence. All right? So I would like to end this session by saying, that in the end how we clear this exam is by having a little bit of faith in ourselves you will not be 100 percent confident and i should not be casualing you to be too confident you are not going to be 100 percent confident people who have cleared the prelims like four times they are also not 100 percent confident everybody at some point does feel that this time prelims will be challenging You will not be 100% confident. You will have, however, to take a leap of faith. In the end, what will rescue you, what will help you clear this exam is a lot of faith in yourself. So please believe in yourself. Believe in the hard work that you have done. Manage your emotions very well. Avoid any negative people in life right now for the next 20 days. And I'm sure you'll cover, cover, clear things with flying colors. All right, it was wonderful interacting with you. Thank you so much. Stick to your sources, revise what you have read, and read them continuously, and no need to pick up any new material. Don't pick up any new material. Read what you have done, and you'll clear it with flying colors. And then, when you clear it, I'll have a special treat for you. All right, thank you, class.